Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Chris's Secret Podcast. I'm impressed that you found it, and on this week's episode, I'm on week two of being a diehard, diehard Chiefs fan, and I've got to say, it's the most fun thing in the world. It's the most fun thing in the world. I'm crowd surfing. I think that's the chant that they do. <laughs> it's so sick. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Chris's Secret Podcast. I'm impressed that you found it. And on this week's episode, my beloved, my beloved Chiefs that I'm a two-week-old fan of are in the Super Bowl. It's it's so dope. It's so dope being a Chiefs fan. And that brings me to my first segment of the show called That Was Dope. That Was Dope. It's a segment I made up last week about the Chiefs. And, you know, it's all I can say about being a Chiefs fan is this, it's just dope. So this is my segment where I'm just sitting. I'm sitting on the sofa. I'm watching the game. And I'm just like, that was dope. <laughs> that was dope. Unlike when you watch the Cowboys and you say, that was depressing. That's what you do when you're a Cowboys fan is you watch and you go, oh, that was really depressing. That was a really depressing play. And then another play happens. You're like, yep, that was also really depressing. Now, now that I am a Chiefs fan, I just get to say that was dope. So first dope play, the obvious touchdown path to, Ty, or, uh, to uh, I almost said Tyree Kill, to Travis Kelsey. That was dope. That was dope. They have the most combined what touchdown like uh, like touchdown to wide receiver combo with Patrick Mahomes and uh, Travis Kelsey they like broke it in the last game and they're just running up the score now that was dope and then and then they cut to Taylor Swift like every two seconds like celebrating in the booth also dope then that the the dopest I think the dopest play of the game I will get to that Lamar like catch and run but that third down play where Patrick Mahomes is like running all which way in the pocket and then just flicks it to to Travis Kelsey and he catches this like just crazy diving catch it's so dope it's so dope it, I'm used to watching those plays and be like no 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 oh we threw an interception that's typically how it goes when you're a Cowboys fan and you're watching Dak Prescott play but in this case I'm like no 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 oh that was dope. It's just so dope. So then, another sick play. It's third down, and Ravens like need to get the first down, and they strip sack. I don't know if it was third down, actually. But they strip sack Lamar, and whatever that defensive player is just like falls on the ball. And it's just like such smart, such smart football IQ, such good coaching by the Chiefs. Like, because you watch the 49ers last week, and whoever that player was picks the ball off at the end of the game, and is like running around the field. It's like, what are you, you, you're an idiot. The game's over. Just just go down. Why are you like trying to be a hero right now? Unlike, that's why Chiefs are going to demolish the 49ers. But that's besides the point. The, the player strips back, and they just perfectly just fall on the ball and just lay there. And it's like, it's just football 101 fundamentals are so sound with the Chiefs. It's it's just dope. And then the, the the third and forever where it's like the end of the game. They need to get a first down. And what do they do? You think they're going to run the ball? No. They throw a bomb down the field for the first down to, to the ice the game. It's just one dope play after another dope play. Now, an honorable mention to that was dope because I'm not a Ravens hater other than the fact that my uncle – just a freaking he liked he liked the Redskins then he for some reason likes the Ravens and then for another reason he likes the Packers just jumping on all these random teams bandwagons and then every time one of his like million teams plays the Cowboys and beats us because that's what they do every time he like rips on me so since he's a Ravens fan I slightly don't like the Ravens just because of him but I actually like the Ravens I like Lamar um so an honorable mention to just that was dope was when Lamar threw it they batted the ball a bajillion feet in the air and he somehow just rips it out of the defender's hands and runs for like a 15-yard first down. That was sick. That was sick. And like, you, you, I don't know how anybody doesn't like Lamar. Like, you gotta just, you gotta respect it. It was kind of like, like him in the off season was that like last year or two years ago when he was like going through his whole like I need to get paid more, and he's like kind of being weird about it. But then he backs it up and he just immediately gets paid immediately wins the MVP or probably is going to win the MVP this year and then immediately gets his team to the AFC Championship game. Unlike my beloved Cowboys. Unlike my beloved Dak Prescott who demanded all the money in the world and then 
can't even beat can't even beat a freaking Jordan Love like what what it just it's just painful it's just painful it's just painful to be a Cowboys fan um but anyways so the other thing I was thinking about while watching the game it's so cool when like like Travis Kelsey like got like was like just like talking shit to number fifty I don't know I don't know the uh, the Ravens players names like that if you're coming into this pod expecting me to give you like like smart analysis or breakdowns of the game that's not what I do here um, I'm just jumping on the Chiefs bandwagon and it's been an absolute blast of rooting for him but I'm watching Travis Kelsey and number fifty like just talking shit to each other it was sick they're just like mouthing off to one another like going at it. Why do we need announcers? Like, why can't we just mic up the players and just listen to them going at it on the field? Like, I, I could care less about what Tony Romo has to say about the game. I, I love my favorite, and, and I will say, I do like Romo. I, I was not, like, a big Romo hater when he was on uh, the Cowboys. Like, I, I, I liked him. His problem was not his play necessarily, other than being a choke artist, but what's new with the Cowboys? Uh I, my more my more issue with the Romo situation was that every year he'd get injured. It, if he if he was healthy the whole year, it was like oh we we have a chance, and then he'd get injured like just without fail every year. So I will give Dak that he other than when his ankle was freaking in a million pieces, Dak's pretty durable. But anyways, I just it's just so annoying listening to Romo be like yeah it's just it's hard in these big moments and these big games they just start to get tight. I'm like Romo you you were never in a big game. Maybe in college when you were like playing like like. Division two like football like or whatever he was he was like A double A or whatever he was he wasn't even in the freaking big leagues of the college football and so it's just like really annoying to listen to these announcers especially ones that have never been there and done that like at least Troy Aikman when he's talking you're like all right like you've been there you've done that you did big things but it's just like I don't want to listen to you I want to hear the players mic'd up talking crap to one another like that's what I want to listen to. It, it's just so annoying. Maybe have a, like a play-by-play guy that says like two things every like few seconds just to explain what's going on. But otherwise, I just want to listen to the players like talk crap to one another. It just would be so much more enjoyable. So, anyways, I was thinking about that when I was watching like whatever Travis and Or Fifty just going at it. Like I, I just want to hear them talk. Like it'd be sick. And then another thing that I had that I was just like confused about. And so maybe somebody that's smarter than me with football, like if there's like any like football coaches or people that actually know football. Why at the end of the half, like for the Chiefs who are a very well-run team and very well-coached, I did not understand why they they had, I think there was like, you know, the game had a couple seconds left in it in the first half. They throw the ball, they don't convert, convert the first down, and they immediately call a timeout. But they called a timeout and there was still eight seconds left on the clock. Why? I don't know why they didn't just wait until there was four seconds left on the clock to call the timeout. That that confused me. So if anybody understands football better than me and knows why they didn't just wait till four seconds, because then because then they had to kick off the ball and like obviously very very unlikely that something's going to happen in four seconds. But at least if you would have just called the timeout with four seconds left on the clock, there's just no chance that the Ravens had. It. I mean, they didn't do anything with. It. I think they kneeled the ball. But still, it's just like why would you even give them the opportunity? Just take the timeout at four seconds. Because four seconds, you still have enough time to then if they like, I mean, I guess it didn't matter because it was fourth down. So it didn't matter. Yeah, like, because I know if it was like third down or something and they bobble the, uh, the like if they pull a Romo on the uh, on the field goal, you can spike it. But it, it's, it's four seconds. Like just, I, I didn't understand. So somebody smarter than me explained in the comments why the heck they didn't just run the clock down to four seconds at the end of the first half and then take a snap. But anyways, then other two other notes on the game. Poor number four on the Ravens. I think his name is what is it, like Zay Flowers, I think is the guy's name or Flowers. What he had a rough a rough go at it for like like just back to back to back to back to back. He starts off, he starts off by having that sick play where he like catches the bomb down the field and then like gets tackled and he like pushes the Chiefs dude on the ground and like stands up and is like looking over him like spins the ball and is like just like flexing on the dude and gets a penalty like a 15-yard penalty and then and then, so he gets flagged for the taunting. Then he gets thrown the ball by like Lamar. He's like running, running into the end zone, diving for the touchdown. And one of the Chiefs players punches it out, and then like they fumble it like through the end zone. So then it's a touchback Chiefs ball. So like first taunting, then fumbles the ball through the end zone. Then I don't know if y'all caught it, but the poor, the poor like sideline reporter is like, yeah, 
Hey, Flowers is would like threw his helmet down and smacked his hand like Skip Bayless at the beginning of his show. How about them Cowboys? He like hits his hand and he, like cuts his hand and injures himself. And it's just like so like get flagged, fumble the ball through the end zone, and then injure yourself on the sideline by hitting your hand on the bench. Ah, that's a that's a rough that's a rough sequence for that guy. Um, but anyways, also other notable thing that I just don't like. I, I like the Ravens, but like. Why was OBJ walking around at the end of the game, like, giving motivational speeches to everybody? It's like, dude, you're known for catching, like, a one-handed catch against my beloved Cowboys. What's new? We always have all the cool plays happen against us. And then he he did, he had, I mean, he kind of stunk on the Rams until the, like, Super Bowl. He was balling out, not going to deny it. He was balling out. But then he got injured in, like, the second half or the second quarter. So it's like, you're known for one catch? And one decent almost half of football in the Super Bowl. Otherwise, like, I, I, I don't really know what the hype is about him. Like, I'm pretty sure he's more known for, like, social media, his hairdo, and, like, that weird photo he took with, like, that girl eating pizza. Like, I really don't understand why he was, like, walking around giving, like, motivational speeches to these dudes. Like, I would just be like, bro, shut the, shut the fuck up. I don't, I don't want to talk to you. I, I just want to sit here and cry about my damn Ravens losing the game. So, I really don't understand that OBJ thing going around. But whatever. I digress. Um, so, anyways, my beloved Chiefs on to the Super Bowl. And, and they are plus money. <laughs> Bet the house. Bet the house on the Chiefs. Bet the house. Like how how are they how are they underdogs? They've been underdogs what, like the past two games, I think, right? I know they're underdogs against the Ravens, like Mahomes and Andy Reid, underdogs. Easy money. But now on to the Cowboy Killers, the 49ers, and my beloved underdogs, the Lions. And for this, I'm gonna switch my attire. Let's go Lions, even though y'all lost. This is my, no, this is not my Cowboys Michael Parsons jersey. No, 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 don't be fooled. This is my Jared Goff jersey. Let's go Lions. That was sad. That was a very sad game. I really wanted to see the Cowboy Killers go down, the 49ers. They beat us every year, and if they don't beat us, the Packers beat us. I was really hoping that it would be a Chiefs Lions Super Bowl. I just feel I feel for Lions fans. Y'all are the only people in the league that might have it worse than Cowboy fans, at least in my lifetime. But honestly, I can't even say that anymore. Y'all made it to a freaking NFC Championship game, so like y'all have it better than us now. You, you, there's no more complaining. But the poor Lions, y'all were dominating, dominating the beginning of that game. It it looked. It looked like y'all were going to the Super Bowl. I was, I was, I was about to be speechless. I was like, "Yo, maybe Team of Destiny. They might be going all the way." Jared Goff. I thought he was going to lead two teams, two teams, to the Super Bowl. And keep in mind that Jared Goff was the number one overall draft pick to the very sorry. Not they're not the the Lions of this year or the past few years. The or sorry, not the Lions, the the Rams. But Jared Goff was drafted number one overall to the Rams. Just a joke of a franchise when he got there, a joke of a coach when he got there, and the team was horrendous. Everyone's blaming it on him. They're saying that he's a wash, he's overrated, biggest bust ever. And then he gets a a good coach, like no denying Sean McVay is a dog, and gets a good coach, and then like immediately gets to the Super Bowl. Like first year, first year with Sean McVay, go to the playoffs. Next year with Sean McVay, go to the Super Bowl and get beat by the greatest dynasty in sports history, or at least in like NFL history with the Patriots. All right. That's Jared Goff. Then gets traded for a bag of balls to the poor lions, the sorry, sorry lions and brings them all the way to the NFC championship game and was balling out. Like it, it, that game was not his fault. He was hitting receivers in the hands left and right. So, ah, I was hoping, let's go Lions, let's go Lions. I was hoping y'all would take down the damn Cowboy Killers 49ers. But, and also, I got to give a shout out to the Lions fans because y'all, y'all showed out. 
because San Fran is like they got a good crowd. Like those those fans show up, they show out, they're loud, they'll travel. Dude, that that stadium was almost as loud for the Lions as they were for the 49ers. Like when they would show the crowd, it was it was a lot of red, obviously, but there was blue everywhere. So shout out to y'all, Detroit. Y'all traveled well. Detroit versus everybody. Let's go. So, anyways, ugh, brutal though, brutal. Uh, and I had, I was like taking notes. I was trying to be a hardcore podcaster for like two seconds there. I was like taking notes. I was like, wow, just just great job, Lions, into the first half, converting these third downs, third and long, third and long, kick a field goal. Like that was a big, big thing. And then, uh, and then I hate to admit it. I hate to admit it. But I'm pretty sure I single handedly jinxed the Lions. And I do apologize. I was sitting there watching the game, and I was like, yo, this is sick. This game's kind of a blowout. Let's make it a little more interesting. And open up Fandle. I open up Fandle. I'm like, should I bet on the game? Eh, I don't know. I don't really think I should. And then I saw their stupid little promo. Risk-free. <laughs> Risk-free. Same game parlay. And I was like, well... I guess I should put some money on. Like, let's make the game a little more interesting. Like, 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 what's going to happen? So I go in there, and I do a same-game parlay, risk-free bet, up to five whopping dollars, five measly dollars. I shouldn't have done it. I apologize. I apologize, Lions. I screwed you guys. Five effing dollars. And I bet I same-game parlayed the Lions under... Jared Goff, over 200 yards passing. <sighs> and then the win. It was a $5 bet that paid out like $7. What a terrible investment. What a stupid bet. It just, what a waste. First off, what a waste of money. I just just burning $5. Like, what a, what a terrible bet. $5. Why would I even do it? This is stupid. So not only, so I, I feel so bad. So I bet like three minutes in, not even, it was like kickoff, kickoff of the second half. And I'm like, F it, let's put, let's, let's do a stupid game. Same game parlay, just to like have like the tiniest little sweat just for like fun. Like, ah, let's see if they're like, like, let's, let's see if the under will hit. Cause I was like, you know, if the over hits, that's probably not going to be good for the line. So I was like, you know, let's see if the under can hit in Jericho's easily going to throw for 200. And then, and then you know, the Lions win right out or uh, win outright. And w- like the second I placed the bet, boom, San Fran touchdown. I was like, fuck. So then I was like, all right, well, well, now, 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 if I bet the Lions to cover, now I'm just chasing. I'm an idiot. So now I'm like, all right, if, if the Lions can now cover, like the Lions from that one touchdown went to plus money, which is crazy because it wasn't even, the game wasn't even tied. The, the Lions were still the, now now the underdog. So I was like, oh, freak. Well, let's just chase the bet. So I was like, oh, five, five more dollars. Put it on. Boom, fumble. Boom, tied game. Boom, down. Boom, game over. They lose. The second, I, I will, I apologize. I should know better because every time, every single time I bet, every time I bet on the Cowboys, they lose. And it's just, it's just I, 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 I screwed y'all. I apologize, Lions fans. I jinxed the hell out of y'all for a $5 same game parlay. That's, that's brokey behavior. I, I, and then I, I, I don't even know. I would just give him a shout out here, but I don't know his name. But I like was on YouTube because I was like, all right, I need to like stop watching the game because I'm like jinxing him now. And I turn on some like Lions dude. He, he just like watches the game. I don't know if he's like a podcaster or what his deal is, but he's he's watching. And I turn it on as soon as the uh, 49ers, I, I think it was they kicked a field goal to go up. And poor dude, I, I turn it on. And he's like, we have we have to score a touchdown here. We have to score. I won't settle for a field goal. We need a touch. And this poor guy, like probably I didn't tune in at the beginning of his stream, and I turned it off after that. I was like, I can't watch this poor guy like having his poor heart ripped out 
on a live stream. Oh, dude, brutal, brutal for the Lions fans. Also, just something I was thinking about during that game. What what are what are with all these stupid commercials? Like like when the game is going downhill like that since I was rooting for the Lions and I can only imagine for poor Lions fans. Nothing is more annoying than when they cut to a commercial break and it's just some stupid like Liberty Liberty Liberty. I'm like shut the I don't want to hear about Liberty Insurance right now. Or or it's some chick uh, yeah, we don't have freezers here at Chipotle. Isn't that crazy? It's like, no, I don't I could care less about your freezer at Chipotle. I just I just I hate I I always hate the commercials, but I mega hate the commercials when the team that I'm rooting for is just falling apart. Cuz you just have to sit there and listen to just idiots trying to sell you stupid stuff. That I have no interest in. And I feel like the commercials were brutal, brutally long. Like the commercial breaks for that Lions 49ers game was just brutal. <sighs> Couple things, because I will say, like, as much as the, the freaking 49ers just tear my heart out every season, I don't hate them. And how can you not like Brock Purdy? Like, what a dog. What a dog. But I was, he, there was a shot of him, like, standing on the sideline, kind of like looking before they went to one of the, like, 20 million commercial breaks is it just me or does he look kind of smack like the hardballs like he looks like he could be a hardball son I, I don't know if it's just me but he looks like he could be related to jim hardball or john hardball so i don't know i just thought that was interesting brock purdy though just never lost a playoff game that he was started and finished like now i will say i look forward to the day and it better happen it better happen, otherwise Cowboys stand no chance. I look forward to the day that Brock Purdy pulls a damn Dak Prescott. I was a huge Dak fan when he was fourth-round pick, making no money. We had a stacked team around him. He was just the ultimate guy's guy, great locker room character, dude. And then all of a sudden decided, hey, actually, I deserve all the effing money. And then screwed us. All right? And I can't wait for that to happen with Brock Purdy. Because th there's there's no denying he deserves a crap load of money. I'm pretty sure he's making less than a million dollars right now a year. As a quarterback that led his team to the Super Bowl. And don't forget, don't forget that Kyle Shanahan, other than with Jimmy Garoppolo, and even with Jimmy Garoppolo, it was like up and down, but he was typically doing pretty well and would always ball out in the playoffs. But without Jimmy Garoppolo, Kyle Shanahan's record, Kyle Shanahan's record is horrendous. Like he is a horrible. It's like worse than Belichick without Brady record that Kyle Shanahan has without Jimmy Garoppolo. You give him Mr. Irrelevant and they're in the Super Bowl. I like I know their team's stacked with good players, but it 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 does not matter how stacked your team is. Every year, it's like this team stacked, this team stacked, and then their quarterback throws a million picks, and it's like, all right, well, there you go, that was fun. Like, remember, like when Kirk Cousins went to the Vikings originally, and they were like, we're gonna win everything because freaking what was his name? Uh, that freaking backup backup dude that was playing, and they had that crazy uh playoff game against the what was it, the Saints, um, where Diggs caught that insane touchdown pass and then Kirk Cousins goes there like we're gonna win the Super Bowl and it's like no because Kirk Cousins is just the white version of Dak Prescott just a major choke artist a major choke artist and just gets a bunch of hollow stats so anyways Brock Purdy Brock Purdy is a dog a dog it, it also kind of gives me the same vibes as when like I, just because Kyle Shanahan ultimate choke artist when it comes to like playoff football just cannot cannot get out of his own way and just calls this just the dumbest game plan when it comes to playoff time and I remember when the Chiefs were in the Super Bowl first time around playing the 49ers and there was a there was uh it was like whatever they were down by a bajillion points and Mahomes they cut to Mahomes on the sideline and he's just like yelling at everybody like fired up and then they cut to Andy Reid, who also, like Kyle Shanahan, used to be known as an ultimate choke artist. All right. And they cut to Andy Reid after they're showing Mahomes, like, getting all fired, like, let's go, boys. Like, we're not losing this game. And they cut to Andy Reid, and he's just standing there. Oh, my God. 
oh, oh, no. looking terrified, shaking in his little boots. All right. And I'm like, Mahomes is a dog. That was when it was like, all right, Mahomes, Mahomes is, it, Mahomes is, is the man. Like, don't get me wrong, Andy Reid, you're good. But Mahomes, it is easily, easily 70 30 Mahomes to Andy Reid. Like, I'll never forget that. Andy Reid just standing there like, oh my God, shitting bricks. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to choke away another Super Bowl victory. And Mahomes is over there just yelling at the boys, getting them fired up, and of course wins the game. So, anyways, it has this very similar feel. All I'm going at is it has a very similar feel to Brock Purdy and Kyle Shanahan right now, where Kyle Shanahan cannot get out of his own way just doing the dumbest play calls. Like last week where it was pouring rain and Brock Purdy can't hold the football and they have Christian McCaffrey and he won't hand the ball off to Christian McCaffrey. So then then the game is just like – all right, screw you, Kyle Shanahan. I'm just going to go out there and ball out, and Brock Purdy wins them the game. It, it has a very similar feel right now to, like, the Mahomes. Obviously, on a way lesser level. Andy, Kyle Shanahan can only dream of becoming Andy Reid, and Brock Purdy can only dream of becoming Patrick Mahomes. But it has a very similar feel where it's like quarterback is definitely saving the day for that damn coach. So last thing I'll say is I cannot wait for the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is going to be – it's going to be sick. It's going to be legendary. And uh, like obviously my beloved Chiefs, easily. I, I like I'm. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna put money on them because I just I just freaking jinx the hell out of the Lions. But the Chiefs are gonna. They they have it in the bag. The fact that they're an underdog is is insane. But it's gonna be a great game. I'm very fired up for it. Also, I mean it would be nuts. It would be nuts if the 49ers won. It would be nuts. Like Brock Purdy. I I will trade you Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and Mike McCarthy for Brock Purdy. Like you, there's just no denying. There's no denying how much of a dog he is. It's crazy. So I'm very fired up for the Super Bowl. Please, 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 please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free. It means the world to me. I want to keep doing fun content like this where I'm talking about football. Now, I also talk about real estate. I also talk about sales. I also talk about how I make passive income, how I live for free. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, subscribe. If you just want to see me talk about sports, also subscribe because I'm going to try and keep doing it every once in a while. Once the NFL season's over, I'll probably do some stuff with, with maybe some NBA. But it means the world to me. If you just subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's free. It really helps me out. It makes my heart happy when the Cowboys just repeatedly stab it. So with all that being said, figure out some ways to make some passive income so I can see you out on the pickleball courts, out on the paintball field. I think that's what they call it. Snowboarding on the slopes, really doing anything you want other than betting $5, a stupid risk-free bet that jinxed and blew up the Lions season. I apologize, Lions fans. I screwed y'all. Peace out.